The research that I do gets at these sort of deep questions of what it means to be human. Do we have a universal sense of fairness? What is morality? How, how universal is it? So if a human and a chimpanzee and a rhesus monkey and a capuchin monkey all share a common behavior, that provides some more evidence that whatever that proto-monkey was, that human from hundreds of millions of years ago, that was a, probably a character trait that existed in the species. And so that's something that we would say was a deep trait. And the content of morality is something that seems to be designed by the human culture. And I'm interested in how this sense of morality evolved. So I'm Sarah Brosnan and I'm a professor of psychology, philosophy, and neuroscience at Georgia State and I've been here for 11 years. When I was growing up, I was always interested in being outside. I was the kid who was always catching something, you know, here's a lizard, here's a tree frog, you know, mom, can they stay in the kitchen? And as I got older, I became more and more interested in science, but particularly biology and psychology and behavior sorts of things. In general, what my team and I research is social behavior and social cognition in primates. We're interested in particular within that realm in how they make decisions about their lives. So at a broad scale, we're doing behavioral research that looks at um, decision making, how it's influenced by things like risk, how they make decisions about whether to cooperate, how, the, how they make decisions under situations of um, conflict, um, how they make decisions when they are in a situation where one individual is getting more than another, so inequity. So the way I see it, morality is an umbrella term that covers all of these sorts of behaviors that help maintain social regularity and help maintain social groups. Now in humans, there are all these other rules about how you engage with the world. One of the things that I've been interested in studying for the last 15 years or so is whether or not other species pay attention to what is fair. Fairness is one of the key features of any system of morality. When we say something is fair, we mean it in this sort of all-encompassing idea. There's an ideal about what a fair distribution should be, and if it doesn't match that distribution, we get upset. We can't ask the primates that. We can't even figure out what their, dis what their ideal distribution would be. We can see how they respond when they get less than a partner. <laughs> we can see how they respond when they get more than a partner. And we can see if those differ. And so what we're really interested in is what I would call one of the fundamental features of the sense of fairness. So not a sense of fairness in and of itself, but how individuals respond when they get something different than a social partner. So the initial study that we designed and something that we still use is how individuals respond when they have to do some work, but they get paid differently than their partner. So how do you feel when you are the one who gets treated negatively or gets treated unfairly? So for this, we have the monkeys do a task where they have to return a token to us. So in this case, the tokens are just these little orange rectangles. So we give it to them, they give it back to us, and then they get a food reward. And some of the monkeys will receive grapes for doing this, or really grape quarters. And some of the monkeys will receive slices of bell pepper these chunks here. They're happy to eat it, but it's not their favorite. And then the second food is something that they all prefer over the first. And the way we do that is that we do something we call food preference tests. So we'll go in and we give them a dichotomous choice test. So we walk in, we hold up the two foods, we offer them out and see which one they pick. So in the full study, what we do is a study where we have multiple different comparisons. So how do you respond when your partner does the trade and gets a grape versus when you do the trade and get a bell pepper? How do you respond when you both do the trade and get the bell pepper? So obviously the interest there is both times you're getting this less preferred food, so do you respond differently when your partner gets something better? So if you're only interested and only focused on what you're getting, you shouldn't care what your partner gets. But if you are paying attention to what your partner gets, then you should respond differently to the same reward for the same task when your partner gets something better. Um, one of the things we're actually looking at now is whether we can see differences in their sort of affective responses. So what we're measuring here is a fairly cut and dried behavioral response. So you either accept the token, do the trade, and eat the food, or you don't. We also get some changes in their sort of what we call affective responses or emotional responses. We don't know if these are the same as in human emotions, but they do things like they'll increase banging or they'll look agitated. We're gonna play a game. I know, you want some food. So just to orient you, so this is Nala, she's the alpha female, um, and she's the one who we're gonna start with the low value food. And this is Lychee, and she is the lower ranking female, and so she's the one who we're gonna start giving the high value food. 
The first thing I'm gonna do is give this to Lychee and ask her to give it back. Good job. See this? There you go. Okay. See this? There you go, Nala. Good job. See this? There you go. So she's holding it in her back foot now. See this? There you go, Lychee. Can I have it back? So Lychee's frustrated because her partner keeps getting grapes and she keeps getting bell pepper. So she actually likes bell pepper. So if this is just about, oh, I do a task and I get a reward for it, she shouldn't care. But she clearly cares that her partner is getting something better, which is the grape, and she's getting the bell pepper. And so she's irritated and so she's quit returning the token or even coming over and taking the token because she doesn't want to keep participating with someone who is not giving her the same reward. I mean, that's the human interpretation of it. So, you know, obviously it's really difficult to do these sorts of studies because we layer on all sorts of meanings. We look at that and we see a really frustrated, angry monkey who feels like they're being treated unfairly, which isn't necessarily what the monkey's feeling. Again, this isn't a full-blown sense of fairness, and of course we have no idea what Leachy understands about this. But what we do know is in these monkeys, they respond differently to the same situation and the same reward when their partner gets something better than they do. So it seems to be a foundation of the human sense of fairness. One of the, the most fascinating parts about working with the primates is that they are so intelligent and so engaging and so the questions that you can ask are so intriguing and complicated. One of the biggest perils is it is really easy to anthropomorphize what they're doing and to overinterpret. So we have to be really careful to draw a line between these are what the data say and here are how we're interpreting those data and here's what they might mean. I guess my two big things are to do this across species and to also better understand how what we're seeing in the lab is uh, translating to what we see in the wild. And one of my hopes is that my research will get people outside of the tight area of animal behavior and primate behavior paying attention to the biology literature and the evolution literature and thinking, ooh, maybe this does have something to tell us. Maybe by studying these other species, we can learn something that informs us about human behavior and informs us about how we're thinking about humans. But I hope that in general that my work is reaching a broader group of people outside of my sort of narrow area of animal behavior and causing them to think about their own work differently.